or the shock results of last season. Klaus Jensen, somewhere buried in that pack. The number 10 scored the pick of the four goals the Gunners conceded that day as Charlton secured their first victory at Highbury for 46 years. The man in charge, Rob Styles, one of the Premiership's hardline referees, 60 yellow cards and five reds in just 15 games. And it's worth pointing out that half the visiting teams at Highbury this season have had a man sent off. Charlton have a better scoring record here than any other Premiership team in recent seasons. They've scored seven goals in their last two visits to Highbury. It's taken Manchester United seven trips here to get that many. Charlton in their chain strip of all black, getting the game underway. Arsenal can now feel Newcastle as well as Manchester United breathing down their necks. They're both just four or five points, I should say, behind them. And Charlton have Chelsea in their sights. They'll go level on points with Claudio Ranieri's team if they can repeat their victory at Highbury last season. Henri finding Jeffers. Go kick the verdict. And good defending from Jonathan Fortune. I think that's going to be a feature, really, how Charlton handle the movement of Thierry Henry. We've just seen there from the quick free kick from Edu, and he just pulls away off his marker, find a little bit of space, and once he gets turned and squares you up, he's got wonderful pace and he takes people on at will. These two teams have an identical record over the last 16 league games. Ten wins, four draws, and two defeats each. As Fish wins it back. Part to play in that Charlton attack. Unwittingly. And that's there on Kole Toure, who's replacing that uh, right back, the suspended Lauren Parler, beaten to it by Scott Parker. One mark for the Charlton man today, his 100th league game for the club. A big good battle there between Scott Parker and Ray Parler. They're both very competitive. Certainly been in outstanding form for Charlton Athletic in recent months. Certainly deserved his uh, call up to the England squad against Australia. Now, Freddie Jungberg, a big cheer to greet the news of uh, his inclusion in the starting 11 after so long out with injury. Push back to goalkeeper Kylie. Martin Keown comes to meet it. And the header on by Bartlett finds Jensen. Turned by Lisby. Now Chris Powell. Parker. It's broken kindly for Lisby. You'll look to uh, feed it into Jensen, but got too much on the ball. It's a great shame because uh, while they played some nice stuff on this left hand side, Kishishev had a lot of room over on the right hand side, and the ball really needed bringing out of a tight area. I think, uh, certainly, it's fair to say that Charlton come here with uh, a lot of confidence. So one defeat in 15 Premier League games is a tremendous achievement. However, Arsenal themselves have gone 11 Premiership matches without defeat since they went down 2-0 at Manchester United in early December. They've won seven and drawn four in that period. They had a very similar run at this stage last season, which they ended up extending to 21 matches unbeaten. And, of course, they won the title. Cardi's clearance. Nisby. Chef pursuing it. And Broncos, Jeffers header. Good determined challenge by Ewell in midfield, and Charlton get the throw as well. Ewell. He's been looking for a bit of support. And in the end, it all went wrong for Charlton, but not much has of late. Got that uh, club record fifth successive Premiership victory despite being without four key players against Aston Villa. Alan Kirbishley was down to his last 16 fit men. And by the way, he's just been voted. Pretty much the kiss of death, that award. Yeah, you've mentioned it, it probably will be, yeah. There's Colo Toure, the Ivory Coast international. Martin Keown takes over. His next Premiership game will be the 550th league game of his career. Ray Parler, Jungberg down the right, up against Chrissy Powell. And he's beaten here. And goes down, and referee Styles 
waves aside the first penalty claim of the day. Campbell winning it back strongly for Arsenal. And then couldn't find Pires. Lisbon. Campbell in control again. I think there's one thing we talked about it yesterday, didn't we, about uh, Chelsea's performance at Newcastle, about starting well, putting aside that have played midweek in the Champions League under some pressure. You know, Arsenal really weren't at their dominant best against Ajax, so they've had a little bit of travelling. Whether uh, they are feeling a little bit tired, it's important that Charlton set about their task very quickly early on and just test Arsenal a wee bit. This is Toure, who actually made his full debut against Charlton back in September. Keo and on to Campbell. They do. Lovely football by Arsenal. Pires. Used to a high octane start from the champions. And we're getting it. Toure. Looking for Henri. Jeffers is right up alongside him. Good header away by Fish. Jungberg. Just kept it in play. No, the linesman belatedly flagged to Jungberg's dismay. Fish just covering round behind Jonathan Fortune. It's important, I think, when we play against Henri and Jeffers, that uh, you get the distances right about your defensive play. You know, if you push too far up the field, then there's always a danger of Henri's pacing behind. And if you drop off, then they've got the capability of getting the ball into their feet. So the balance has got to be right. Powell's head up, straight to Parler. Jeffers, Jungberg. Now on to Adu, good ball for Pires. He's got Van Bronckhorst to his left, Henri ahead of him. How often he miscontrols the ball. Great show, wasn't it? Uh, but Robert Pires just picking that ball up on the left hand side. They have played some terrific one touch football in that midfield area, Arsenal. And Charlton, as hard as uh, you work, very difficult to get in and around when the side shows up quality. Difficult little bounce there for David Seaman. The ball didn't carry as quickly as he thought it would. We saw West Ham, didn't we, on a number of occasions when we were last at Highbury, elect to do that. Remember David James just knocking the ball long. And Arsenal, well, whether it's a centre-half not taking command or David Seaman, perhaps, an earlier call. Charlton have lost just once in their last 15 league games, and that was on that uh, infamous Chelsea beach, which they subsequently complained about, of course. They've won ten and drawn four in that period. They come here today sixth in the league, above the likes of Liverpool and Tottenham, Leeds, Manchester City. They do. Charlton's throw. And they're working very hard on the chart. And uh, that's certainly been a key in their good performances of late. A real collectiveness about them. No real big stars in their side. But they are really prepared to work hard for each other. As uh, the manager says, I may not have a team of stars, but I've got a lot of players that other managers in the Premiership would love to have. Fortune looking to angle it up to Lisby. It's come to Parker, run back by Parler. Be a good battle between those two today. <laughs> and that battle has gone Arsenal's way through kick. Oh, well, Scotty Parker launched himself into the challenge array, Parler. <laughs> Uh, Parler has uh, seen it all, done it all. You can see there, Scott Parker really did get stuck into the challenge. Gave a man of the match performance in the victory over Villa in Charlton's last game. That was after being picked, of course, for the England squad for the friendly against Australia. They never made it off the bench. Ewell, great uh, success of his new role in midfield, Ewell. Here's Parler. The Arsenal passes flowing in familiar style. Toure on to Jungber. Parker closing him down. Missed the last 14 games. Got a Jungber with an Achilles injury. Keo. All fizzing around with great pace early on here. That's the ball well on the Arsenal on a very difficult playing surface. You mentioned it earlier, I think. Uh, I can't recall it ever being this poor for uh, a long, long time here at Highbury. Here's Bartlett for Charlton. Jensen has scored a fabulous goal in their win here last season. He was dumped to the ground. Parker plays it on. Powell keeps it in. 
Lisby up with him. That's a good ball for Ewell. Well, good player was it by Charlton on this left hand side. Chrissy Powell did very well linking up the pass from Scott and Parker. Young on Perez. Arsenal have already taken the free kick and gone post. Replacing Ashley Cole. And I expect that uh, job for a while now. It's going to be some six weeks before Ashley Cole is back in the Arsenal uh, reckoning. Good tackle by Campbell. They do. Fish. They will win it back. Even by Premiership standards, this game has got off to uh, a pacey beginning. It's very competitive as well, I think that's a, a big key in this game. Certainly if uh, Charlton gets something out of the game, they need to make it competitive. Outside there, Tony Jeffers. They do start the game reasonably well, I think, in that midfield area. I was quite surprised here when you look at the amount of Brazilians who are giving caps because they've played so many games over the course of the season. I don't think he's been capped yet. No, that's right, taking the place, I suppose, today of another Brazilian who certainly has been capped and played in the World Cup winning team, Gilberto, who's given a break today, he's on the subs bench. Keown beaten to it by Bartlett. Difficult ball for Campbell, who claims there was a handball by the Charlton striker. win today, Charlton, they'll go level on points with Chelsea, although Ranieri's team do have a much better goal difference. Incredible, isn't it, really, when you think of the job that Alan Kirbishley has done, you know, a side that, uh, with only ten games to go, including this one, and they are on the verge, dare I say it, the verge of the UEFA Cup spot. Yeah, he says their real target is to beat their uh, best premiership total of 52 points, which they achieved last season. Of course, as you say, race in Europe is a real possibility. It's a big test today, of course, and the next game for them in the Premiership after this is Newcastle. So they'll uh, know a lot more about their destiny after those two matches. Parler. Van Bronckhorst. And back by Luke Young, the former Tottenham man, assured of a, an unfriendly reception from the home fans today because of that. Campbell's clearance. Away by Fish. It's gone to Van Bronckhorst. And now Parler given away. Parker. This is Jensen. Dane picking out Kishishep. And Arsenal back in possession with Robert Pires and Ray Parler. He's had uh, limited first team opportunities this season because of injuries and the competition for places here. Jungberg, good ball for Henri, oh, very close to feeding it into the path of Jeffers. Now Edu, Pires. Toure on the right. Powell and Bartlett doubling up against him, and it was Chris Powell who won it. This will chase and chase here with Sol Campbell. <laughs> it does help when your build as powerfully as Sol Campbell. <laughs> I think brick outhouse was the words that you were looking for. That's incredible, isn't it? Power and strength. But you know, you think we've played uh, nearly 14 minutes, and we haven't really seen an awful lot of Thierry Henry in this game, which is incredible when you think of the form that he's been in this season. 25 goals in total. But uh, that's a measure of how well Charlton have started this game. Very competitive, especially in that midfield area. Brilliantly, Pires. Arsenal, the top scorers in the Premiership, 62 goals in 28 games. They've scored in 66 of their last 67 league games. The only blank in all that time when they lost 2-0 at Manchester United in December. Lisby, Parler intercepts, and Fish misjudged the bounce. Chance hasn't gone yet. Henri again. Jeff is in the middle. Pires almost reached it. 
How did Charlton survive that? Even they won't know. Well, incredible, isn't it? He looks to the skies, he can't quite believe it. It was almost a leg break, wasn't it? That took Mark Fish by surprise, and he got it onto his left foot. He's actually wheeling away, he thinks he's scored. But when he gets up on his feet, he shows an unbelievable piece of skill. Just to flick this ball up, there you go, flick. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant, wasn't it? Well, that was the chance, and there's the ball that was very deceptive against Mark Fish. But Henri, well, you certainly wouldn't have uh, bet against him not converting that chance. Here's Kishishev, meanwhile, for Charlton. Long for Jason Ewell, well read by Martin Keogh. Really good rhythm to this game in the opening quarter of an hour. It was a good pace, I think. I, you know, I, I always, when we do come to Highbury, you're always quite uh, impressed, aren't you, by the start that Arsenal always seem to make in football matches. Opening 15, 20 minutes, they always seem to be very quick about sides. And I think you can clearly see that Charlton have talked about that this week and made sure that they're well organised, well disciplined. And to be fair, up to now, they've done reasonably well. There's only that one chance by Henri. Ewell. On to Parker. Lisby. Shishep to his right, he looks for Jason Ewell in the centre, and it's come to Bartlett. Didn't make the most of that. Powell. It could be tricky for Arsenal as well. But the danger's gone now. Fish. And he wins it back briefly, but now Luke Young. From Bartlett. Ewell won the battle against Jungberg. Now the Dane Jensen. This is Jason Ewell. Offside. Well, that must have been tight. Well, Kevin Lesby looked as if he'd sneaked in behind Saul Campbell, but just moments earlier we saw a little cameo play of Jason Ewell. Capable he is of getting into the box. He wasn't far away with uh, meeting that cross from that right hand side. And he'll make those runs late. Here's Adu, who scored when Arsenal beat Charlton 3 0 at the Valley in September. He's lost that challenge. Parker. Ryu. Do well to hold on to that, but Jungberg wins it back. Toure couldn't go forward. Keon there in support. Ball from Martin Keown to pick out Thierry Henry. Pires edge of the box, Jeffers near post. Should have been close to the goalkeeper, wasn't it? But as you rightly said, Martin Keown fired a, a brilliant ball of all 40, 50 yards. Henry certainly made it easy for him. The run was uh, very bright, very astute. The impression also need a little bit more width in their team at the moment. All very narrow, which suits Charlton. Kishishev looking for Lisby. Was that a corner? That's what Charlton are claiming. But the decision is goal kick. Arsenal, as you'd expect, with a fabulous home record in the Premiership. 12 wins out of 14. The only matches they haven't won here against Liverpool, which they draw, or drew, and against Blackburn Rovers, which they lost. They've scored 33 goals at home. It's easily the highest total in the Premiership. 37 out of 42 points at home. And again, Kishishev. Yule's made strides down the middle. He made up a lot of ground there, Jason Yule. And that's good defending by Toure. Keown's clearance has gone straight to Powell. Now Jensen. Yule. And he was being held. Charlton get the free kick. He didn't have an influence on this game, Jason Yule. You know, already we've seen three or four good runs from that midfield area to get forward. It's clearly that balance uh, suits Charlton very well, him making those runs from that area of the field. Alan Kirbishley said when he signed him from Wimbledon, he almost got two players for the price of one. He can play up front, and he can uh, certainly play very well from midfield. Top scorer this season with ten goals. And Jonathan Fortune has gone forward for Jensen's free kick. It was Keown who met it, though. Ewell. 
Perez did well. And Arsenal get the free kick. Now by Luke Young. It's gone in early to Jeffers. Franny Jeffers. Good block by Powell. And now Jensen. Yeah, it's been a very enjoyable start here, the opening 20 minutes. Thierry Henry. Calm play by Chris Powell. You certainly see why Charlton have done so well this season, can't you? I mean, up to now, I remember this stage last season when we were here, of course, when Charlton won 4-2 for 20 minutes. They got absolutely battered by Arsenal and could have found themselves 3 or 4-0 down. But they've given a very good, competitive, well-organised opening 20 minutes. Kishi Sheffer there. And Charlton get the free kick for that late challenge on Radostin Kishishev, the Bulgarian international. That was clever, wasn't he, the way he won the free kick as well. I think he's just uh, conned the referee a wee bit. There may well have been some form of contact. But, uh, well, whether Klaus Jensen will have a dip from here. As you uh, said at the top of the programme, well, it's got a wonderful goal here. Last season where he uh, chipped the goalkeeper from the edge of the box. Jensen shaping up to hit this one. Powell with him. But it is the Dane and it's miles over. One of his best, was it? <laughs> really disappointed. That's got a lot of quality, Klaus Jensen. It's uh, certainly interesting to see some uh, comments attributed to Patrick Vieira this week and actually singling out Jensen as one of the, the star players in this Charlton Athletic lineup. I don't think it's his best position playing wide left. Prefer to play central midfield, but because of the form of Ewell and Parker, he's having to uh, play in the position that he finds himself at the moment. Parker has it back here for the Gunners. And the referee has awarded the free kick for Jason Ewell's challenge. Well, it might be Thierry Henry to try his look at the other end now from a free kick. Certainly uh, fancy this. Also got the abilities of uh, Van Bronckhurst and, and Edu, of course, who scored from free kicks this season so they're certainly blessed with one or two around the ball Thierry Henry has scored ten goals in his last nine premiership matches he's the division's leading scorer but he leaves this one to Van Bronckhorst First time ever I've seen Thierry Henry not take a free kick, <laughs> given the opportunity. Sol Campbell. Good header, Jungberg finding Toure. It's done well, Freddie Jungberg. Interesting ball in as well. Pires with a header back, Jeffers is there. Pires leaves it to Henri and it's gone back to Pires. Good save! Charlton survive again by the skin of their teeth. Jungberg, that's a free kick. Well, how did they manage to scramble that away? Charlton Athletic in Kylie knows that they're a little bit fortunate there. It was actually the work of both wide players, Freddie Jungberg with a cross from the left hand side and Robert Pires getting in on the act. Broncos will take this one. Sol Campbell, a possible target, far post. It was certainly aimed in his direction. Excellent defending. Arsenal have a corner. Charlton players still not happy with the referee styles about the original free kick. A 
Back goes Campbell again. And Parker happy to relieve some of the pressure. Keogh. That's Thierry Henry with a lovely little downward header for Perez. Fortune certainly needed a bit of help, and he got it from Luke Young. He do for Arsenal. Luke Young's just dumped Robert Perez to the floor. And here goes Henri Jeffers! <laughs> give him the right service, and he'll give you the goals. Well, they haven't been at their best, have they, Arsenal? But just over the last two or three minutes, they've looked particularly dangerous. There's enough Charlton bodies in and around the defensive third you would have thought to deal with this, but wonderful play by Henri. And then the ability to get the ball in the danger area. Mark Fish is appealing for offside, was certainly very close indeed, but Henri unselfish outside of the right boot. And he's just saying to his striking partner, finish that one off. And he duly obliges this. He said he would become the fox in the box, and Jeffers having limited opportunities in this Arsenal first team. Puts Arsenal ahead. And at the other end, Lisby almost bringing Charlton level straight away. Well, I talked about the pace and the power of the front two of Charlton. You've just seen that in one very special moment. The header from Bartlett and the turn and the strike from Kevin Lisby isn't far away. And David Seaman scrambling to his right hand side. Fortune makes the run to the near post. He's aimed towards Fish. Now Kishishev, he's done well. Campbell thumps it clear. And it could have been an instant uh, answer, if you like, by Charlton Athletic to go and go goal down. Bartlett on to Lisby. And back here, he's gone straight to Toure. And then Bronkhorst, and Bronkhorst gets it away. Thierry Henry. Powell's clearance. No let up in the pace here. Tony Jeffers scoring only his second Premiership goal of the season. The other one came at West Bromwich Albion on Boxing Day, his fifth goal in all competitions. And remember, most of his appearances have been as a substitute. He even scored on his England debut, of course, against the Aussies. Here he is, lovely little ball. And Jeffers again. A oh, great return for Jungberg. Charlton under the cosh at the moment. Well, they're just getting into the groove, aren't they, Arsenal? Having got that goal, you can see there's a lot of confidence being drawn from that. Just about got a fingertip to that. Important that he did. Well, it was just enough, wasn't it, Dean Kiley? Certainly scampering away towards his far post. This is uh, certainly a good test of Charlton's resolve at the moment. They need to hang on because Arsenal certainly finding some form. In many respects, is uh, sort of draw parallels from yesterday's game. The visiting side working very hard, doing reasonably well. The home side not playing as well as uh, we've seen them of, uh, during the course of the season, but certainly getting the opening goal. See that uh, Charlton have uh, had just as much of it as Arsenal. And here's the man whose goal separates the sides, Jeffers, doing well to find Jungberg in the battle for possession with Jensen. It's come back to Franny Jeffers again. <laughs> he was just about to line up a shot, and Jason Ewell said, no, you don't. Parker to Powell. This is Jens. Scotty Parker again. Kishishev coming in from the right. Jensen, Bartlett. Arsenal back in possession with Freddie Jungberg. Today, a good ball. 
Parler. Up against Fortune. You're doubling up behind him. Edu. And Parker in the tackle again. Here's Jungberg. Great spot to see uh, Van Bronckhorst run. It was also noticed by Kevin Newsby. As you begin to have an impact on this football match, Freddie Jungberg. It was always going to be difficult for him. He's missed the last 14 games. He needed to settle into this game. And he's just beginning to find his rhythm and his form and his touch. And I think uh, the way that he uh, seems to be finding positions in field now is giving Charlton a problem. Jensen needs some width here. Charlton, Chris Powell will provide it. Jensen. In goes Jungberg to win it back. Henri. Perez is right up with him. Parker's tackle was a good one. And he didn't like that, Thierry Henri. Didn't like it at all. I must say, I didn't see anything wrong with the tackle myself, but uh, maybe the replay will shed a different light on that incident. Well, this is uh, Scotty Parker's game. You know he's competitive. You can't take that away from him, but I think the way Thierry Henri reacted right under the nose of Robert Stiles. They have to be very, very careful indeed. You know, we've seen time and time again when players have reacted in such a manner, then uh, they have uh, occasionally been given red cards. I think on this occasion, Thierry's only going to get a yellow, but you can see Scotty Parker there trying to work hard. He actually gets something of the ball there, and then Henri just kicks out at the Charlton midfield player. As I say, Rob Styles gets a very good view of that. For him, still finger wagging, but I've got to say, I saw absolutely nothing wrong with Parker's tackle at all. No, I agree with you. He's a wonderful player, Thierry Henry. It doesn't give him the right not to be challenged. And now he's uh, fueled with anger and given away a free kick. Well, he has every right to go for that challenge, so he really shouldn't have a go at Scotty Parker for the challenge that he makes. And uh, he clearly catches uh, Scotty Parker, but he wins the header. There's nothing wrong with that. I actually think he's uh, perhaps been hard done by Thierry Henry on that occasion. I do think that it was a header that he had every right to go for, and he clearly wins. But clearly the referee felt that he was leading with his knee, which certainly catches Scott Parker. Well, I've never seen a referee change his mind, so Henry <laughs> would do well to back away and just get on with the game here. <laughs> Jensen's free kick, Bartlett sneaking around the back of Lisby. And Newell completing the threat. Now Perez. In goes Kishishev hard. See another uh, example there of Jason Newell getting in the danger area. I don't know if you want to get on really angry, really, because <laughs> he's dangerous enough when he's calm. Here's Toure. On to Parla. The Invisible Man was the uh, target for that cross, I think. <laughs> he seems to be getting very frustrated, isn't he, at the moment, Thierry? He's just going to settle himself down. Otherwise, he'll uh, certainly become another uh, statistic of Rob Styles. Another free kick in Arsenal's favour for the foul on Pires this time. Rolling up nicely at Highbury. Sol Campbell, the threat on the near post, Martin Keown, far post. Great header away by Chris Powell, it's gone to Van Bronco, so he could have it back. He's on re again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Keown getting in with Trish at the far post and uh, three Charlton players in the road outside, I think. Well, I think uh, well, George was talking about Thierry in the studio beforehand and arguably saying perhaps the quickest player in the world, but you know, he can play as a left wing, he can play as a right wing, he can play as a centre forward. He's got the ability to drop off and at times play as a midfield player and that's what makes him so special. Henry, Powell got 
something on it as well. Now Perez back to Sol Campbell. Brilliant skill from Campbell. How well did Kevin Lisby do, though? Very nimble touch from the big man there, Youngberg. Seaman under pressure from Bartlett. Henri. On it goes to Parler. Powell wins it back for Charlton. Now Parker. Henri stayed on the ground. Having got a blow in the face there. Lisby for Charlton. Powell's tackle is a bad one, according to Mr. Styles. Free kick. Yeah, I'm not convinced the leader about that free kick. I don't think uh, Kevin Lisby really had that ball under control as Ray Parler just stepped across to win the ball back. Yeah, it's uh, given Charlton an opportunity to get the likes of uh, Fish into a more advanced area. And Bartlett, we've seen already, can be very commanding in the air. And Jason Yule will be looking to pick bits and pieces up. Jensen's effort wasn't the best, easily cleared by Parler. In goes Young. Jensen again. Keown's header away. Arsenal have... Uh, just got that ability when the opposition does put them under a bit of pressure to find their passes in the tightest of areas as they did then. Adu on to Campbell. Henri, lovely ball to Adu. Jeffers wants it early, he's gone for goal instead. Well, he had a couple of options, didn't he? I'm sure you hardly need reminding, but Liverpool are playing Manchester United in a little game in Cardiff today, the Worthington Cup final. It kicks off at two. You can see it live on Sky Sports 1. And our next game on this channel, or rather, sorry, on Sky Sports 1 tomorrow night, is Aston Villa against Birmingham. Referee's <laughs> given Arsenal a free kick. have been very impressive on the road this season. In fact, they've won as many away games as Arsenal themselves, a total of six, three draws, five defeats away from home, and only Middlesbrough have conceded fewer goals on their travels in the Premiership this season. Charlton have let in now just 17. What will certainly give them hope as well, getting back into this game, Alan, is that they've scored in their last 15 matches. Kia. Good ball for Jeffers. It's just not smart fish for the moment, but he's presented it straight to Parker. You, Young. Parker. He pass a bit heavy from you, but plenty of time for and Jonathan Fortune. Only his second season as a regular first teamer, the young centre back is only 22. Here's Parker. Ben Bronco's able to see that one out quite uh, casually. I think uh, Alan Kirby should be reasonably happy with the side's performance in this first half. You know, they have been very competitive and they've tested Arsenal on a couple of occasions. But uh, clearly that uh, piece of magic by Thierry Henry setting the opportunity up for Francis Jeffers just to side foot home. And uh, he will have known coming into this game that the likes of Henry and Jeffers are capable of doing that to any side, never mind his. Mark Fish gets plenty on the clearance. Back in by Campbell. And the boot was a little high, so Arsenal got the free kick. Charlton's third successive season in the Premiership, remarkably enough. They finished ninth and then 14th in the last two seasons. Remember, they were relegated in their first season at this level, bounced straight back again. And up against Henri, it's still in play. Not now, Arsenal's throw. Edu. Now 
Perez. Ray Parler for Arsenal. Good effort from that range, and it almost caught out Kylie. I don't think he knew an awful lot about it, did he? Dean Kylie. It's a wonderful strike from Ray Parler. Not really renowned from this distance, but he really does catch it well. He certainly bounces in front of the Charlton keeper, which makes it doubly hard for him to take. I think he was grateful just to claim it. Hasn't scored since last season's FA Cup final, Ray Parler. Token of the FA Cup, another massive game, of course, for Arsenal next weekend when they play Chelsea in the quarter-final. A shout there, I'm sure, from Parler, which deceived Powell with gamesmanship. Campbell and Bronckhorst. This is Henri. Lovely skill again from Thierry Henri, but he got the ball wrong. That's a great shame, but uh, it's the first time really we've seen Van Bronckhorst getting forward from that left back position. I really thought that the two fullbacks today. Well, really natural midfield players would have been perhaps a little bit more adventurous perhaps let's give us give credit to Charlton because they've worked very hard Kishi chef on the right hand side Jensen on the left hand side to try and prevent that from happening when Arsenal beat Charlton of the Valley in September they made history it was the 44th consecutive game in the top division in which they scored beating a record that had stood uh, for 66 years held by Manchester City previously they're used to breaking records at the hybrid. They do. Now Parler. Toure. Plenty lining up for the cross here. It's gone short to Edu and now Jungberg. Back to the Brazilian. And again. Jungberg bursting onto it. Well played. Well played, Scotty Parker. Might have hurt himself in the process, but he really has given uh, another trademark tireless performance in that midfield area. Jungberg, today. This is Keo. Oh, turning it back into his own half to Campbell. Arsenal have won 18 of their 28 league games so far. Six draws, four defeats, 60 points. Five ahead of Manchester United and now Newcastle. Keown for that. Thierry Henry. Oh, lovely little ball for Toure. I don't know what he was thinking of there. Oh, what a great change because it was a wonderful work opening by Arsenal. Again, some slick passing and just this ability and awareness of Henry to slot Toure in, and that really needs to come across the face of the goal. See, there's enough players in there to convert that opportunity, and he's just acknowledging that. The young player still to make his mark on this uh, Arsenal side. Again, another player had limited opportunities. Fisher Chef on to Young. Just caught there by Van Bronckhorst. on the Arsenal bench about that decision. <laughs> Pat Rice on his feet protesting. <laughs> Easily cleared by Parler. Yule trying to win it back. Pires with a brave header. Kishishev forward. It's gone straight to Kevin Lisby. Oh, good play by Edu. Oh, what skill as well. But Charlton keep pressing Arsenal in their own half. And that's worked out brilliantly for them. Lisby. They've got a corner out of that. Well, they'll be unfortunate, really, Charlton, because uh, so Campbell guilty of overplaying, really, in an area where he just needed to get the ball away. Certainly won't want to give... Uh, Charlton, the lifeline going into the interval here, giving them a chance or a potential chance to equalise. Fisher Chef 
got the attempted cross all wrong. That was a total waste. Oh, it was such a great shame, wasn't it? I, you know, you really can't afford to give away opportunities like that from set pieces. They've won their last two away games, Charlton, against West Brom and Sunderland. Just one defeat in the last seven on the road. But, of course, this the supreme test, and they still have to go to Manchester United and to Liverpool. Henry with a towering header. Bartlett now for Charlton. This could be their final opportunity to draw a level. Parker, in this half, anyway. <laughs> no quarter has to given there. <laughs> Charlton's throw it. To the dismay of all in that corner of Ivory. <laughs> I think Dermot Gallagher, the fourth official, just hiding out of the way of the wrath of the Arsenal bench at the moment. <laughs> Trying to escape down the uh, tunnel. <laughs> the throw aimed towards Fish. Bartlett's alongside him as well. They've got in each other's way, if anything. You. Good play by Adil onto Pires. Dangerous break here. Thierry Henry on the ball. They've got Jeffers on Mark. Far post screaming for it. What a mess they made of that. And Pires has headed it in. Charlton have shot themselves in the foot in stoppage time at the end of the first half. They had at least two good opportunities to get that one away, and now they've been punished. Robert Pires scores his 11th goal of the season. Well, classic Arsenal counter-attack play, really. Charlton had the opportunity, they had a throw in in the final third, and it'll be to the fury of their manager, Alan Kirbishley. He left his uh, seat in the box, and he certainly doesn't see what happens next, because that really is poor, poor defending from Charlton, wonderful place from Henri, and Chrissy Powell gets it totally wrong, really. He ought to have cleared the danger, and Freddie Jumberg, well, he's just ahead of it there, and the ball comes off Chrissy Powell, and Freddie Jumberg just helps it in into the danger area, off the post, and Robert Perez thinks, thank you very much indeed. Perez gets his 10th goal in the last 15 Premiership matches, right on half-time, Franny Jeffers had scored midway through the first half. Charlton have played well, but quite simply, Arsenal have played even better. And that's why they go off, leading at half-time, by two goals to nil here. Wonderful. An incredible pace to that first 45 minutes and an awful lot for Charlton to do in the second half if they're to maintain their unbeaten run. We'll have George's thoughts after the break. Killer second goal for Arsenal right on the stroke of half-time. The last thing that Charlton could afford. George kept saying they mustn't concede a second. Inadvertent touch from Chris Powell. And a very deliberate finish from Robert Perez. Last year, I was lucky enough to win this for the third and final time. We edge ever nearer to Cardiff. Here in the last eight. And the semi-finals are within touching distance. The pressure's on. This cup never ceases to amaze me. That's why we love it so. Can you handle it? But whose name's on the magical cup? Get past this one? Who knows? An FA Cup sixth round double next Sunday from 11 a.m. Sky Sports 1. It's live. Live it. <laughs> Get used to a better view. I got the rub. Look at me. I got the sun. The tall car for the tough streets. Yeah. The extraordinary new Ford Fusion. It's out there. Yeah. Truly flatbeds in business class. 
It has to be Gary Mabbott. It's a quite amazing story that he had to beat the effects of diabetes just to play football. As you know, I've called this meeting as we need to finalise which deals we're going to be offering this week. Before we go any further... We're at the offices of Teletext Holidays, where the public have just burst in and are now trying to persuade the executives to offer some amazing deals, like uh, seven-night cruises in the Mediterranean with air tours direct from £399, including taxes. Go to ITV1, page 258, or teletextholidays.co.uk. I am sweating like a PRG. Why, Cliff John, I'm arresting you for breach of contract. Why, Cliff, I'm your biggest fan. With Virgin Mobile, you can earn three minutes without signing a contract. My boss, Paul Vitti, is back. I gotta find a legitimate job. You wanna buy this car, what? Look at the size of that trunk. You can put three bodies in there. The only problem is... We have been waiting here 20 minutes. I only minutes. got two hands. I got the left and the right. And I can slap you with either one. He's got the same old issue. I wanna see the manager. I'll show you the manager. Here's the manager. He's built like a racehorse in that area. Congratulations. Robert De Niro, Billy Crystal. Analyze that. Robson would never play again. Listen to the fans as England welcomes back Brian Robson for his 49th cap. Weighed down by the same old mortgage. Plodding along with the same old mortgage repayments. For freedom and flexibility, switch to Cheltenham and Gloucester. Remortgage now and we'll pick up the fees and usually the legal costs too. Contact CNG or Lloyd's TSB. Just over an hour to go until kickoff at the Millennium Stadium, the Worthington Cup final between Liverpool and Manchester United. It's on Sky Sports 1. And tomorrow night in Villa Park, it's Aston Villa against Birmingham 7, also on Sky Sports 1. Here at Highbury, Arsenal look as though they're going to have an eight-point lead at the top of the Premiership by the end of the day. Two up against Inform Charlton. They've created eight attempts on goal, just a five on target. But Charlton have had their moments as well. One booking, and we'll have another look at uh, Thierry Henry's flash of temper in just a moment. Well, Charlton have done their best, but that second goal just before the break is a, is a killer blow. <coughs> yeah, that's definitely the killer blow. I mean, Arsenal are not at the flowing, attractive best, but that's full credit, credit to Charlton. I think they've been in there, they've pressed Arsenal when, when they've been on the ball, and Arsenal have had to work hard for the, the few chances they have created, but they have created a few more than, than Charlton. Mm. So arguably, they deserve to be in front, the killer one is that second goal, I think. There were a few opportunities before they took the lead. Um, Thierry Henry uh, invariably at the heart of all of them. Thought he was going to score after this mistake from Mark Fish. Yeah, I don't know why the bounce here seemed to beat him. In that situation, there's normally only one end product, isn't there? But yeah, what about the little bit of skill after this, George? Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. There it is. <laughs> Terrific. Did I mean, you do that just, in your day? No, no. I didn't have the confidence or the ability to do that, but it just shows you the confidence he has. I mean, sometimes it borders on the arrogance, mm. but this is part and parcel of Henri. When it comes off, it's absolutely wonderful to watch. Yeah. You know, and it just shows you the range of skills he has here. 
It's no. I wonder, I wonder <laughs> if he even knew quite what he was going to do. Or oh, that yeah, just he, he, naturally. don't worry. They do that in training regularly. But very rarely do you see players attempt it, you know, in, in the actual game. Yeah. But great to watch. Well, he had to do th something special after missing what for him was a very presentable opportunity there, George. Yeah, wasn't well, it? he had to pause, but look at this. I mean, absolutely wonderful. <laughs> we'll all be trying that later on this afternoon and we'll all make complete fools of ourselves. Um, Henri then set up an opportunity for Robert Pires. Dean Kiley in the Charlton goal impresses most weeks and he, he makes a very sharp save. But some of Arsenal's attacking play, I mean, we said every week, it, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, it's lovely to watch. It's it? absolutely lovely to watch. This is a very... Again, look, look where Perez pops up, you know, almost in a centre-forward position. And it's a great save by Kiley. And this is why Arsenal are so potent. I mean, it doesn't have to be Henri. There's Perez, look what he is. Set the forward position. They're so fluid, Brace aren't they? They are, yeah. they are so fluid. Wonderf it, it, wonderful it, it, to it watch. It was no real surprise when they finally scored. Um, just a possible hint of offside against Francis Jeffers. The pass with the outside of the boot is sublime. Yeah. But this is where Henri is at his best. He's out in the wing position and he turns on a overdrive. Because into overdrive, goes past defenders, Wonderful pass with outside of the boot here. Yeah. And it's an easy task for Jeffers just to... I mean, it must be great to be a centre-forward. Let's just watch Jeffers' run as the ball yeah. is played. He's, he's on side. Given the benefit of the doubt there, yeah. haven't you? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. There should be a lot more goals for Francis Jeffers if he stays in the first team, shouldn't there? Well, he's got a bit... He had a reputation as a youngster at Everton of being a, an outstanding uh, goal scorer, especially in the penalty box. And if he gets a run of games, we, we can soon see how effective he can be, see how many goals he's going to score, because he'll get opportunities for Arsenal. This is the second one right on the stroke of half-time. Chris Powell's unfortunate touch there. Yeah. And I don't know if he's trying to clear in. it, Marcus, with his, his good foot, uh, where he should have just side-footed it with his right foot here. Mm. Yeah, there you are, see? How many times do we see defenders, you know, trying to get the good foot to clear the ball rather than just side-footing it with a weaker foot. If he'd have used his right foot there, it wouldn't have been a problem. Well, Alan Kerbishley has um, done some wonderful things in football over the course of the past few years. If he can cajole his side to come from 2-0 down at Highbury today, he will be a true master of the game. The second half is next. Showing the soles of your feet is one of the rudest things you can do in Thailand. And this hand gesture, in parts of Greece, would also be frowned upon. At HSBC, we never underestimate the importance of local knowledge, particularly when it comes to your money. Because what we learn in one country can directly benefit our customers in another. HSBC, the world's local bank. Presenting the new 12-inch PowerBook, the world's most compact, full-featured notebook computer. And the new 17-inch PowerBook, the world's first and only 17-inch notebook computer. The new 12 and 17-inch PowerBooks. The next big and small things from Apple. Unbelievable. What a goal. You should have seen it. Sure, I headed the ball out of defence to her man who was here. No, actually, more like here. My man lobbed it out to Duf. The off headed the ball out wide to Xavier. Wasn't Xavier, it was Esky or Fool. Get on with your work, man. Pesky looks up and cuts the ball inside to Murphy. Murphy takes one touch, turns on the sixpence, threads the ball through to Gerald. Who hits a 40 yard pass into the path of Owen. And then it comes to Michael Owen. Michael Owen? Such nice thighs. Owen! Skins the defender with pace before burying it with a quality finish. Yes! Have it! Go! Yes! <laughs> We're talking about rugby, yeah? What's that red line for? So where's the goal? Watch Premiership Goals on your mobile. Pre-order now. Only on three. Thinning hair? Discover the shampoo proven to give men thicker hair. 
New L'Oreal LV for men with Regenium XY. L'Oreal has invented a unique formula that thickens hair for better scalp coverage. New LV for men thickening shampoo because you're worth it. The way I see it, I'm the Chancellor of my own exchequer. I've got something put away for a rainy day. Well, you know it's gonna rain sometime. Fixed up both my sons with stakeholders. And I got a little something called a guaranteed bond. I checked it over with me financial advisor. He said, you seem pretty sussed, big fella. For financial information you can use, give Norwich Union a call or a click, or contact your usual advisor. Together we can help you get sussed. Norwich Union. Together we're stronger. The rules have changed. Now there is no up or down. Introducing Mac 3 Turbo. Total comfort, whether you shave down or up. A new anti-friction coating on all three blades, plus a new strip releases even more lubrication. So even against the grain, you get less irritation and the closest shave. It's turning the shaving world upside down. The revolutionary new Mac 3 Turbo. From Gillette, the best a man can get. Toughness now comes in a brand new shape. The all new Ford Transit Connect is here. International Van of the Year 2003. Job done. On the pitch, we worship them. Ferdinand! Sherry Young back! Off the pitch, we know little about them. Maybe I might get married, maybe I won't. Rio, Teddy, Freddy. We get intimate with three gods of the game, on and off the pitch. Come very moody after a game if things haven't gone well. The all-new documentary series. You've not done your own work enough, have you? Teddy Sheringham, close up, tonight, 9 o'clock, Sky One Sunday. Everyone's Sky Sports 3 now. Australia against England in the World Cup. If you're planning to watch it later, stop listening for a moment. I'll tell you that England made 204 for 8. And Australia, would you believe it, 48 for 4. Andy Caddick's taken all four wickets. It's a miracle. At Highbury, Charlton need a miracle. They're 2-0 down uh, against Arsenal. One book in the first half. Thierry Henry shown yellow after a little uh, contretemps with Scotty Parker. George. Yeah, Scotty Parker here made a very good tackle from the side, not from behind, from the side. And... Uh... Henri was a bit silly here. I think he, he overreacted. It's a perfectly good tackle, good isn't tackle. it? Good tackle, yeah. And Henri, a little flick here. But uh, Scotty Parker gets straight up, doesn't he? Full credit to Parker. He could have made a meal of that. And it's nice to see players, you know, not got other players sent off. Because if he had reacted and gone down there, arguably the referee can may have sent Henri off. What does Alan Kirby say to his side as they go out for the Very difficult. Off? He's just got to lift them and say, look, guys, we're not as, as bad as 2 nothing to suggest. We've got to keep it tight. Let's try to sort of get one goal. Maybe Arsenal will get a bit, a bit nervous, but let's get one goal back, make it 2-1, and we'll take it from there. They were, of course, behind here last season and recovered to win 4-2. Could history repeat itself? Well, anything's possible in football, George. Certainly, it? and uh, what, I, what I was impressed with, uh, Charlton, they were not overawed in the first half. They were under a bit of pressure, but they, they kept their cool, and uh, they were not afraid to go forward when the opportunity arose. Well, if England can take four Australian wickets <laughs> for less than 50 runs, Charlton can come back from 2-0 down at Highbury. Let's rejoin Brian and Alan. Well, it's worth saying that no team in the Premiership has won more away games this season than Charlton. Their six wins on the road is already more than they managed in the whole of last season. And as you say, Marcus, they were a goal behind here last season before going on to win 4-2. But that was only one goal behind. And it was only the second time that Alan Kirby's side had beaten Arsenal in their last 17 meetings. It was their first win at Highbury for 46 years. I'm sure it won't be another 46 years before they win again, but if they can repeat that feat here from a 2-0 deficit, it really would be the biggest upset of this season, I would think. The sun comes out for the start of the second half. Arsenal have 
the target are going eight points clear again of their nearest rivals Manchester United and Newcastle United at the top of the Premiership table they've lost only four times this season but then again Arsenal have beaten only three times in 38 games throughout the whole of last season they are remarkably I think the only London club who won the league championship in the last 42 years what on earth have the others been doing in that time and by the way this season Arsenal are unbeaten in every match against another London club trip on Parker by Van Bronckhorst Playing good uh, full credit to Scott Parker as well once again just getting straight back up he really is emerging as a very, very talented individual, isn't he? And he's had a very good day today. Jensen's free kick, dangerous. Keel met it first. That was important defending from Martin Keel. It was a good ball into the danger area by Jensen. Powell with a header away. Parler straight back in. And then lashed forward by Jason Newell. Keogh wins the aerial battle against Bartlett. This is Jensen against Toure and also Jungberg. The uh, little clash of the Scandinavians goes in Arsenal's favour. They've been top of the Premiership for 14 weeks, Arsenal, and they've taken no fewer than 25 out of the last 33 points available. They've never been lower than second in the table since the end of August. They conceded a free kick here, however. The giant Mark Fish, who's got a couple of goals this season, making his way forward. Jason Newell has sneaked away to the far post. Ooh! And that wasn't uh, such a routine save as David Seaman maybe made it look. Well, he's capable, isn't he, Klaus Jensen? I talked about that in the first half. The first one that he tried to execute was awful, but that one wasn't too far away. Back to fitness now, David Seaman, after the uh, groin injury that kept him out recently. Henri. Oh, that's a great ball for Jungberg, but just too much pace. No, he's annoyed with himself, wasn't he? Thierry Henri just got a little bit too much on the ball to Freddie Jungberg, but... Lundberg, you know, he really is emerging as a key figure in this game and he's certainly drifting from that right-hand side as we've seen him time and time again to good effect. Van Bronckhorst. Dutchman leaves it to the Brazilian. Adu. Now Parler. Keo. Confidence oozing, as you might expect, from Arsenal. 2-0 lead. The start of play anyway, a five-point lead in the Premiership. They haven't actually won successive league titles, Arsenal, for 70 years now. On each of the last occasions, eight occasions, they've won the Championship. They failed to retain it the following season. So a little bit of history in the making, possibly, for Arsene Wenger. Well, they're going to take some stopping, aren't they, Alan? They really are a, a first-class side. You know, everywhere you look, they... They're very strong, they're very powerful, they've got a lot of pace. So you just wonder who between either Newcastle and Manchester United are capable, really, of taking the title away from them. A couple of casualties here. Henri still on the ground, as is Jonathan Fortune. I think it's a pure accident, really, you know, both players going for the ball. Fortune and Thierry Henri. Two out there, Thierry Henry. You said earlier, though, you know, it's, it's incredible when you look at uh, the times how Arsene Wenger does rotate his side that, look, invariably, Thierry Henry doesn't really get that rest. You know, such a desire from him as an individual to play in every game, to add to the tally. 25 goals this season. He never looks tired, does he? <laughs> Not when he's scoring goals, certainly. And, uh, by the way, he's got a fabulous record against Charlton. Seven goals in his previous four appearances against them. Well, I think Freddie Jungberg will probably get an hour and perhaps we might see Jermaine Pennant been out on loan at Watford this season. Done very well indeed, and uh, England the 21 international. 
very highly rated, of course, came here as a teenager from Notts County. But uh, like a lot of young players here, find it very difficult to break in what is a world-class team. Charlton get the free kick. And quickly taken for Powell to uh, latch on to. It's not going to play anyway. Powell thinking he might get a free kick. He was wrong. Henri. Pires. Jeffers has pilled away into a great position again. Just let the ball travel ahead of him, but he has uh, cleverly won a corner. Well, the angle was always going to be tight for him, wasn't it? Once again, a very swift break. You know, Ray Parler keeps the ball in. Could have quite easily gone for a goal kick. And the next moment, Arsenal are winning a corner. That's the sort of pace and drive that they have in their side. In. Difficult one for Kylie to keep his eyes on that for sure. Good safe hands. Huge kick as well in the path of Jensen. Well, he did enough to uh, force Martin Keown into a hurried clearance. Charlton throw. Full marks of Dean Kiley, actually, Alan. You know, he takes the ball very well from the corner from Van Broncos, but really does ping. A left footer, all of uh, 60, 70 yards upfield. Good direction, only one to pick out. Hasn't missed a game this season, the Republic of Ireland international keeper. Lisby's header. And good early distribution from David Seaman, England's number one. To Pires. On to Adu. Jeff is in a great position again. Come to Henri. Henri! Well. You never know what you expect next from him. <laughs> There's certainly an exp expectancy in your voice, I think, when the ball dropped to him. Oh, you fancied him to hit the target here, and I think most people did. Uh, I just wonder whether it's going to be one of those days in front of goal for Thierry Henry. Certainly been the main instigator in creating chances. This time, this be back to the Dane Jensen and to Luke Young. Kishishev to the right. Jensen takes over. Good movement here from Charlton. Can they get something on the end of it this time? Good passing as well. Excellent build up play. Young's cross and Campbell hammers it away. Oh, good play from Charlton Athletic once again. You know, with Scott Parker, it's a hub of that. Even a little audacious nutmeg on Robert Perez along the way. For good measure. Charlton are travelling fans in that corner of Ivory. Ooh, good effort by Fish. And some of those fans <laughs> thought it had gone in. <laughs> they were up where they were cheering. They thought Fish had converted this. There's a good set piece towards the near post. Just runs out of angle, really, Mark Fish. Can't quite direct it towards goal. And so Charlton fans saw the net was bulging, they thought they'd scored. And the Arsenal fans continue to taunt them for their error. In that gentle way football <laughs> fans have. Henri with a great little header on there, young intercept. Parker to Powell. Parker again. Parker read the bounce perfectly. Jeffers nicked away from him by Jonathan Fortune. Pat Rice just retrieving the uh, the ball for Arsenal. It's great to see him back in the technical area. Here's Henri. Incidentally, his right Betty is a great Arsenal fan and hardly misses a game. Quite ill at the moment, in hospital in London. Maybe, hopefully watching this. And I hope uh, she recovers very quickly. The Arsenal 2-0 scoreline won't do her recovery any harm. 
There's Jungberg. Just over the head of Henri. Young. Foul there. Just look a wee bit lightweight, don't they, up front, Charlton Athletic. It's been very difficult, of course, for, for Bartlett and Lisby to really have any impact against Sol Campbell and Martin Keon, two very, very uncompromising and tough defenders. Keon. <laughs> he might be tough and uncompromising, maybe not so good at times with his passing. Jensen. Here's Kishishev. Put in tidy outside the Arsenal penalty box, and now in typical fashion they break in numbers. Jeffers. Whoops, mistake by Kishishev. Adu thought about hitting it and leaves it to the master instead. Another little trick from Thierry. And ball was a claim there by Jungberg as he angled that one into the Arsenal penalty area. And Bronkhorst has the ball back for the champions. Henri. Jeffers is there again ahead of him, and he got it wrong this time, Thierry Henry. He needed to, uh, to go early, but really Charlton have been undone for some very, very good movement, really, by Arsenal at the moment. Mark Fish gets it clear, Henry <laughs> tried to do uh, another of his wonderful repertoire of tricks. This one didn't come off. Lisby, Jensen. Lisby's done well here. Well, was he brought down? It was a reasonable shout, but it's not been given. Henri at the other end. <laughs> Taunts the opposition at times. <laughs> well, he just almost invites defenders in, doesn't need to make challenges on him. And as you said, he's got a wonderful repertoire of skills, tricks, abilities. You know, every position he seems to pop up and just do some wonderful pieces of skill you don't really get the ordinary deal with Thierry Henry I reckon he's Brazilian I don't think he's French at all <laughs> <laughs> and Broncos will take the free kick First threat. And Van Broncos did well, he had to be strong there against Kishishev. Okay, Charlton are about to make a change, and I think it's up front. We talked uh, about the fact that Lisby and, and Bartlett have found it very difficult, and whether Alan Kirbishley goes with three up front or just goes like for like. Fortune. Now Powell. Lisby was nudged over then by Keogh. And maybe the uh, Charlton will use the set piece to make their change. Yes, they're going to. And it is going to be, as you say, a like-for-like -like swap. They're going to take off the South African international Sean Bartlett and replace him with Jonathan Johansson. Not had the best of days, Bartlett. But then there's many strikers who can say that up against the likes of Keown and Campbell. And by the way, Johansson scored a hat-trick for Charlton Reserves in the week against Arsenal Reserves. Jensen's free kick. Ewell. Away by Campbell. This is Young. Straight against Pires. He might be made to pay for that. Henri keeps it in play. Brilliant run by Henri. Pires! Oh, should have been three. Oh, wonderful pace, wasn't it, from Thierry Henri. And once again, you know, it's a fabulous counter-attack. That ball has been launched forward by Saul Campbell, then the close down by Robert Perez. But just look at this. Really is turbocharged, and you can't get anywhere near him. And then he has the ability to open it up for Perez to try and score. 
and Perez just really can't get his body around it to place it past Ian Kiley. Jeffers did well. Edu to Van Bronckhorst. Edu's kept running. Meant that tackle, didn't he, you? I hope he did. I think he knew exactly what Edu was trying. Arsenal, 17 games unbeaten in all competitions. Coming into this one today, 10 wins, 7 draws. FA Cup quarter-final next weekend. Roma in the Champions League after that. Pires, Henri. Kishishev beaten to it by Van Bronckhorst. Ah, oh, another trick from Henri. <laughs> Campbell. Shoot, Shea, say the crowd. <laughs> well, he did. <laughs> I think he's got a mate behind the goal who wanted the uh, match ball as a souvenir. I'm not sure if he's made that far back, though. I think that was Rose Ed. <laughs> They've all enjoyed it, haven't they? We'll see, yes, yeah, Sol Campbell score too many goals from 20 yards. He's pretending to see the funny side of it. I've got to be faintly embarrassed, at least, hasn't he? <laughs> Got three goals this season, but I think they've probably all been headers from a little bit nearer in than that. Van Bronckhorst. Henry, now he could score from here. He could score from White Hart Lane. <laughs> Pires. Toure. And he's kept going, Toure. And still. He wasn't going to give up on that one either. So I said, really, after about 35 minutes, Arsenal were beginning to get into the groove. And they've certainly carried that on in this second period. Really, Charlton. Uh, they're beginning to look a little bit demoralised, not quite certain what to do next, such as Arsenal's performance in the second half. Arsenal bidding to make it a dozen Premiership matches without defeat today. Strange corner. Someone didn't write, read the script, did they? I think someone was perhaps due to spin away towards the far post. Well, if Charlton think they're going to get it easy because uh, Arsenal are about to take off one of their star players, they're about to bring on one of their star players as well. Sylvain Wiltord. The man who's gone, of course, famously clinched the championship at Old Trafford last season. I was wondering whether it's going to be Freddie Jungberg, you know. I'm sure that Arsenal, uh, knowing that the Swedish midfield player's been out for the last 14 games and I think he's only had one reserve team game under his belt, before today's game, and the hour mark has passed now. Yeah, he hasn't played since December, it would be sensible now to give him a break. Jeffers trying to claim a penalty there. Now, Jensen for Charlton, if they could get one goal, it could make it a very different picture. There goes Pires, Franny Jeffers, good tackle by Fish, still Jeffers, Fish gets it away again, corner. That was a good challenge by Mark Fish. And the front of Jeffers was bearing down on goal. Fantastic ability to lose his marker, Jeffers to take up great positions on the field. And it is, as we expected, Freddie Jungberg who makes way to a standing ovation from Heidrich. Huge favourite. The man who contributed 17 goals to Arsenal's wonderful double season. And on comes Will Tord, who so far contributed 10 goals this season. Short to Pires. Only looking for the far post this time. And Kylie took command. What a great ball that was by Kylie. Henri couldn't have bettered that. Gallup and Johansson. Now Kishishev. Awkward sort of clearance by 
Paulo Toure. He's shown in more trouble. Fish. And loses the battle to keep it in play. Look at that pass from uh, the keeper, though, a moment ago. Well, it's the second time he's done it. You know, I mentioned it earlier. He did one uh, to Klaus Jensen, I think, about uh, ten minutes ago. Who oh. knew what he was doing? Of course, a little <laughs> deflection off Jeffers would take it perfectly into the path of Fortune. Fortune being a very operative <laughs> word, then. Going through a slightly surreal stage, this game. Kishishev. Johansson. This is Lisby. Johansson continued his run. Jason Ewell well placed in the middle. Campbell had to reach that, all right. Good little period now for uh, Charlton. They've got the bit between the teeth again. Believing that they can still rescue something from this game. And why not? Luke Young. Kishishev. This is Jensen. Campbell with the clearance. And this is where Arsenal are so strong, breaking in this manner. Especially with this fella. Henri, still going. Thank you very much. That's two. Here's a third. But Fish wasn't going to fall for it this time. Really, that's a brilliant turn of pace, isn't it? You know, at times, you know, Arsenal almost sucks sides in to, to trap the tacking against them, and they break so quickly, it's very difficult to be able to defend against that. He's been doing well there. Johansson retrieves possession. Young. Fischer wanted to play it early and finds Jansen. He scored from that sort of range a year ago. Not this time. Well, they just need to nick a goal from somewhere, don't they, Charlton? As well as they've uh, played at times here this afternoon. You know, some good control, certainly from this young man, Scott Parker. Lisby's offside. And he gets to the final third, really, which has been the big disappointment. Haven't really had enough in the armory just to open up Arsenal. Uh, there's only a World Cup winner coming <laughs> off the bench now. <laughs> What, with the, I'm sure when they talk about the Arsenal dressing room, put your medals on the table. <laughs> I'm not sure they've got a big enough table in the dressing room to cope with it. I think it broke about eight months ago, didn't it? Under the sheer weight. <laughs> Poor kick there by David Seaman. It's gone straight to Kishishev, onto Johansson. Kishishev again, clever ball, but offside, Lisby again. That must have been close. To be very, very close. Clever ball, wasn't it? From Kishishev. And Kevin Lisby, just his pace getting in behind. Yeah. Sometimes that's the inexperience of youth, really. Perez, who uh, I think picked up a little knock a while ago, will come off. Done his bit. The uh, headed goal just before half time, increasing Arsenal's lead to two. And on in his place, Gilberto who has played almost every game in this is uh, first season, of course, in English football after his long summer in the World Cup finals with Brazil. It's interesting, really. I think that Darson Wenger hasn't really taken any liberties with this football match. So, being the respect that he has for Charlton Athletic, I think at this stage it would have been very easy to allow fringe players, inexperienced players like Pennant and, and Sigan to a degree to come into this game. But no, he elects to go with. Alexis like Gilberto and Viltorn. Jeffers. Parler. Now Gilberto. On to Van Bronckhorst. Good little ball in. Henri takes over. Good effort. He scuffs it really a little bit, doesn't it, Thierry Henri? But once again, just. Bossing the situation against Fish, and that first touch and that pace takes him into a good area. And it's an in-between ball, isn't it? You know, is it a shot? Is it a ball towards the far post, towards Francis Jeffers? Ends up somewhere between. 12 uh, goal attempts by Arsenal. They have been the dominant side. They have certainly been the better side as this game has wore on. Get 
Charlton have got to keep believing. 20 minutes to go. It's plenty of time to get back into the game. But it is against mere mortals. Against Arsenal, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Jeff is strong. Did well as a manager would have liked that. And he's battling away again. And then comes Van Bronckhorst to pick out Henri. Wiltor to his right. Harder arriving. This is Sylvain Wiltor. Gilberto is well placed in the middle. Away by Fortune. Jensen. And now Kishishek. Caught out by Edu. And wins the free kick. Foul by the Brazilian. One thing Alan Kirvishly hasn't done is uh, sacrificed the shape of his of his team. He could have quite easily have gone into a more 4-3-3 ambitious formation to try and get something out of this game. I just wonder whether is this uh, game now is going beyond Charlton, whether he may well elect to do that, because they really haven't troubled David Seaman, have they, in this second half? And deep discussion with Mervyn Day. Whilst they decide how they can get a foothold in this game. Kishishev. Johansson, first time ball for Lisby to chase. Jason Ewell arriving, far post. Wanted it early. Lisby delaying the cross and then giving it away. Well, I needed to go in a lot earlier, didn't it, from the youngster Kevin Lisby. Uh, did have a good opportunity, Charlton, because they outnumbered Arsenal. Young. Jeffers uh, making life difficult for Kishishev. Along goes Luke Young. Now he's given it away. And Jonathan Fortune with an even worse mistake. That could be costly. Henri. Spotted Edu to his left. Well, a little bit too powerful, <laughs> but uh, with the aid of the corner flag, which he beat on route, he's kept it in. <laughs> Just have to take it over his shorts first, though. Here's Henri. Oh. And he's gone for the return ball here, Henri. I wouldn't dive in on him if I was Jason Ewell at this moment. Toure. Still Toure. Claim from the fans there that that had gone out, but uh, the linesman saw nothing. Harlan. Gilberto. Clever. Jeffers. Away by Kishishev. Well, they really are getting outplayed at the moment, aren't they? Arsenal are just showing everybody what a good side they are. They did struggle a little bit in the uh, first half. To be fair, Charlton worked extremely hard against them. Well, it takes a little bit more than hard work at the moment. Wiltors uh, won another corner. Don't tell me he's feeling tired. <laughs> <laughs> so he is human after all. Big booming cross for Sol Campbell, who did well to keep that in play. No, he didn't actually. The linesman's uh, eagle egg enough to decide that had gone over the line. Just looking at Thierry Henry, I just wonder whether he's just uh, feeling the effects now. He's put a lot into this match. But uh, George will be happy. He was complaining earlier that he thought his socks were too high up his legs. Well, there you go, George, one for Thierry for you. of Johansson, Campbell's clearance, Henri, this is Scott Parker, the ball for Johansson, and there's in the middle, oh, that was close, good defending, good defending from Toure, spotted the run of Kevin Lisby, he couldn't really afford to allow Lisby a free run here, just have a look at Toure, Lisby thinks he's got to cross him, and Toure, not a natural defender, does very well indeed against the Charlton youngster. 
glimmer of hope there for Charlton. With 15 minutes to go, it'd be interesting if they scored now. Strongly. And here come Arson on the break again. Adu. Good ball for Parler. This is Jeffers. Still Franny Jeffers. Still and Wiltor shot. <laughs> Gilberto. Wiltor. They come at you from all angles. Oh, there's so much quality in this side, haven't they? And, uh, well, almost persistence, really, on the part of Francis Jeffers, just trying to really force his way through. Viltor gets off a good chance. And it's well saved by Dean Kiley. They really are being run ragged at the moment, Charlton. Like a demoralised side. We'll come into this uh, game, of course, six in the table, done extremely well. And a lot of uh, power and pace and passion saw them through the first 45 minutes. Up very strongly and very good goalkeeping by Kylie. Not for the first time today. <laughs> Pinged another one there. I'll tell you what, they should have him up front. I think here's Jensen. Oh, good pullback for Lisby, who should have made more of that. Oh, look at the frustration uh, on the bench, really, for Charles Alakurvish and Mervyn Day. It's a brilliant strike from Dean Kylie to get the ball into the final third. And there goes Henri. And now Adu, good save, Jeffers is there, oh. miraculously kept away by Luke Young from a third Arsenal goal, he can't believe it. Well, he's getting a pat off everybody, and rightly so, once again, fabulous play from Arsenal, and Francis Jeffers, well, you don't often see him miss chances like that, but I don't think it's a missed chance, really, it's just fantastic defending from Luke Young. Well, I think the three best passes of the day have all come from Dean Kiley, the Charlton goalkeeper. <laughs> There's Parla. Adu oh, with a header. I'd love to see him in the five sides in training. I bet he's uh, an absolute sensation. Well, his distribution is uh, fantastic. And you know this is part and parcel now of being a goalkeeper, whether it's uh, direct from your hands or when you receive a back pass, but it really does get Charlton into a wonderful position. But once again, just missing that vital cutting edge. Injury problem for Charlton. Yeah, the referee there signalling, I don't know, for a stretcher or whatever, but... It's a shame for Chris Powell. Well, this has probably never happened before, I'm fairly certain it hasn't in Charlton's history. If Powell has to go off here, they can replace one England left-back with another, <laughs> because Paul Chesky would be the obvious man to come on. Chris Powell, who won those... Uh, Five England caps and the Spenior and Eriksson Koncheski who won his first in the international against the Australians. And it looks as though that little bit of history is about to happen. Off goes Powell to generous applause and on comes. Chesky, Charlton's youngest ever player, famously. Made his debut when he was just 16 and still only 21. Jensen to Parker. Here's Young. Jensen. Keown was always going to win that ball, turned away by Gilberto, straight to the latest arrival, Kuncheski. Powell off with a knee injury, incidentally, and uh, Charlton got themselves a free kick there. It would be a little bit unfortunate, isn't he, Paul Kuncheski? Uh, I think in a lot of instances he probably would have found himself a, a regular first-team player by now, but, of course, the consistency of Chris Powell in that left-back position, it really has uh, limited his opportunities. And he's uh, only just finished serving a suspension for his sending off against Chelsea. The fortunes there, the head in the end, of the head air in the end came from uh, Johansson, an Arsenal defender for a corner. That's a good chance, you know, Alex. 
you know, really was uh, right on the spot and Johansson and Fish and Fortune were all trying to get the ball. Well, the Finn made a dramatic impact as a late substitute against Aston Villa in the last game. Two goals in three minutes, although the second is being looked at by the dubious goals committee. When you think you've got Arsenal penned in like this is when they're often at their most dangerous though. However, Charlton have got another corner. The clock ticks into the final ten minutes. with a header, Campbell was uh, the meaty presence that made him uh, powder off target. Push that again though. Young. Away by Martin Keogh to Henri, wonderful little touch to Wiltor. Again, Sylvain will talk. Here's a do. Henri. And the ball just wouldn't sit down there for Parler. He's waiting for the bounce. Campbell. Well played. A do. And Bronkhorst. Henri takes over again for Arsenal. <laughs> Collector's item, giving the ball away. Not happened that often, has it, during the course of this afternoon? Really has been outstanding, hasn't it? And uh, Arsene Wenger, of course, who brought him here, and uh, Thierry Henri having an unhappy spell in Italy. And Wenger must be absolutely delighted. Not only with Thierry Henry, but uh, his other signings, and the way that this team and squad are shaping up, not just a challenge for honours this season, but certainly for seasons to come. Wiltor, back to Parler. <laughs> Jens. Well played Luke Young, who was determined that that ball was going to be his. Still go. Yeah, great show because he just once past two Brazilians. First it was Adu, then it was Gilberto. Certainly want to tell the grandchildren, isn't it? And it's getting increasingly unlikely that he'll be able to tell the grandchildren about the day he finished on the losing uh, winning side, I should say, at Highbury because uh, time is running out now for Charlton to repeat the miracle they achieved here last season when they beat Arsenal 4-2. to park good tackle Van Bronckhorst and then Parler Parker wins it back but has given away a free kick in the process well we thought he'd made a perfectly good tackle in the first period and I think that one was from behind and uh, Martin Key on there just uh, telling him exactly what he thought the style is well below his yellow card average today. <laughs> Slightly unusual, isn't it? Because he could quite easily have given the uh, card to the Charlton Athletic midfield player. You can see that. Tackle from behind. And always a bit of concern, of course, uh, when there's a knee problem for Van Bronckhorst, having had so long out with a cruciate ligament injury. Twentieth appearance of the season, the Dutchman. And as I mentioned in the first half, he could have a long run in that position with Ashley Cole injured. Well, an air of inevitability. 
inevitability be about proceedings now as we move towards the final five minutes. Arsenal's uh, five-point lead in the Premiership is about to become eight again, you would think. The Broncos giving it away, however, and Jensen can't do anything with the gift. He's not happy at the moment, is he, Van Broncos? As you rightly said, it, the tackle from Scott Parker really has shaken up. I think it was that right knee that he was feeling. Clearance is Adu. Tord wins it back. Clever ball from Sylvain Wiltor. Goes to Ray. Gilberto takes over. Now Van Bronckhorst into the final, well, almost four minutes now, plus stoppage time. There won't be a great deal of that. Ruto. Gilberto. Anybody counting the passes in this attack? Henri. He almost fell over and still kept the ball. He'd certainly be disappointed uh, not to get on the score sheet here this afternoon. Well, he's done everything else, hasn't he? get a free kick. Right, right, right. If we go back to the end of last season, Arsenal have won 21 out of their last 26 Premiership matches at Highbury. Just one defeat here in the last 14 months. And with their magnificent away form, that is why they're champions. That is why they're championship favourites. Oh, great skill. Henri. Wiltor there again, and he's won a corner. That must be fantastic, really. You know he can bring Sylvain Wiltor onto the game, and Gilberto. And, you know, there's no Dennis Bergkamp today, of course, he's out injured. No Patrick Vieira, he's suspended. This squad really is awesome. change before the corner's taken here, Charlton, yes they do. Scotty Parker has had an excellent game, being taken off. Maybe uh, something to do with those clashes he's had recently. And the Swede, Matthias Svensson, on in his place. His first job will be to help defend the corner. And he's marking Jeffers. Clever from Parler, very clever. A good ball in too. He's earned another corner off Mark Fish. Parler. Oh, lovely ball again. Good talk. Sets one up for Van Bronckhorst. Let's come off Fish for corner number three. Really quite get hold of it, did he? Van Bronckhorst. But, uh, I think Arsenal are quite happy just to let the clock tick down. Of course, I think Charlton likewise. Now they know there's nothing in this for them now. And I said corner three. That's in quick succession, of course. A dozen all together over the game. The first major domestic trophy of the afternoon of the season is about to be decided this afternoon. As Jeffers miss hits his shot to Wiltor. The major domestic trophy of the season is still very much in Arsenal's grasp, you feel. Well, the referee's assistant is uh, certainly flagged for the offside, and it is as this ball comes back to Sylvain Wiltor, but it's an excellent save. Dean Carley didn't know, had to make the save. in Arsenal's position at this stage of a Premiership season has failed 
to win the title since Manchester United were overtaken by Arsenal themselves in 97-98. Gilberto, Wilto, as we move into the two minutes of stoppage time, Arsenal are completely in control. Good on Ree though, Alan, I talked about it earlier, you know, he's actually played as a midfield player then. You know, you'd send the midfield players would be delighted to pick the ball up and pass it the way he does. Here's Wilto. Will produce a finishing touch here, or is there to be some consolation in the game for Charlton? Jensen for that. Well, it really has uh, been the, uh, the part of their game today, Charlton, that really has let them down. You know, I think up till then they've you know, battled very well, they worked extremely hard in the first 45 minutes, found it particularly difficult in this second period. They've got a good shape to their team, but when it comes to that final third, when you need that little bit extra, especially against the likes of Arsenal, just hasn't been there for them. Into the final minute at Highbury. Arsenal on their way to yet another Premiership victory. Jeffers set them on the way with that goal in the first half. Konchesky sliding tackle. Strong run, so late in the game by Lisby. On to Kishishev. Campbell's clearance. Young, Johansson. Kishishev's giving it away to Kiev. It's 12 league games without defeat for Arsenal. It's 13 wins out of 15 on their own patch. It's eight points clear of Manchester United and Newcastle United at the top of the table. It's clear that if anyone is to stop Arsenal retaining their title this season, they're going to have to produce a superhuman effort in the last nine or ten games. Charlton came here last season and shocked everyone with their 4-2 victory. It was not to be a repeat performance today. Franny Jeffers scoring his almost customary goal. And then sloppy defending, really, by Charlton right on the half-time break. Led to Pires doubling Arsenal's lead. Alan Kerbishley's team haven't played badly today, not by any means. But the opposition they've been up against are of the highest calibre of all. And the final scoreline here at a sunlit Highbury is Arsenal 2. Charlton Athletic nil. A little bit predictable in the end. Charlton sixth in the table, but men against boys and Arsenal are heading definitely, it would seem, towards another championship title. Now, the Worthington Cup final, the first uh, big piece of domestic silverware, up for grabs this afternoon. Kick off in about three minutes' time at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. You can see the whole of Liverpool against Manchester United on Sky Sports 1. And tomorrow night, Villa Park is the venue. Villa and Birmingham, 7 o'clock, also on Sky Sports 1. Arsenal are eight points clear at the top of the Premiership. Can they be caught? George's reaction after the break. Charlton did their best, but for the moment they went a goal down fairly early in the first half. There was to be no way back. Their unbeaten run comes to an end, and Arsenal go on and on and on and on. England must overcome the mighty Australia. The Cricket World Cup, sponsored by Travelex Foreign Exchange, live and exclusive now on Sky Sports 3.
Perfect. Personal space, pure luxury. The all-new Renault Espace. Old Tom's, only from O2. Get 400 sacks for 16 pounds. That's per P each. See what you can do, O2. Presenting the new 12-inch PowerBook, the world's most compact, full-featured notebook computer. And the new 17-inch PowerBook, the world's first and only 17-inch notebook computer. The new 12 and 17-inch PowerBooks. The next big and small things from Apple. The Angel Season 3 DVD box set. I did. 22 amazing episodes. I want to learn to be like you. To get the heart beating. I'm in love with Angel. With awesome extras to get the blood pumping. Take a look. Angel Season 3. Own it on DVD for Monday. Weighed down by the same old mortgage? Plodding along with the same old mortgage repayments? For freedom and flexibility, switch to Cheltenham and Gloucester. Remortgage now and we'll pick up the fees and usually the legal costs too. Contact C&G or Lloyd's TSB. Ford Monday Night Football, the second city derby. After their most humiliating defeat of the season, Aston Villa look to restore local pride against Birmingham City. Tomorrow at 7 live, Sky Sports 1. I wondered if Charlton could do it again after that 4-2 triumph here last season. But it wasn't to be. And from the moment Arsenal took the lead, there was really only one outcome. Francis Jeffers second league goal of the season. He'll probably be disappointed he didn't add to that. And this was the killer blow right on the stroke of half-time. Look who's involved. Unfortunate touch from Chris Powell and Robert Pires. Was in the right place at the right time stretch Arsenal's lead at the top of the Premiership. All for one and one for all. Only the 15 attempts on goal today. It's sluggish, really, by the Arsenal standards. Seven on target. All too easy for them in the end against the Charlton side. The run beaten in six prior to this. And, of course, have won five in a row, a record for them in the Premiership. They weren't disgraced, simply weren't good enough for most teams. In fact, 
all teams that come here have to say the same thing. So to the top of the table, which makes excellent reading if you're from the red half of North London. It's 63 from 29, eight clear of Manchester United, who are currently concentrating on the Worthington Cup final. Of course, nil-nil early stages against Liverpool in Cardiff. And Newcastle still just about in the equation as well, level on points with United with an inferior goal difference. Charlton stay sixth, 45 from 29, still just three behind Chelsea, four short of Everton. And every chance yet of a UEFA Cup spot, I don't know, it's maybe even a Champions League place so they can kick on after this. Not every game will be as tough as this one, of course. And down at the bottom, well, if the season was to finish now, Sunderland, West Brom and West Ham would say goodbye, but Bolton and Birmingham are by no means out of the woods yet either. Well, Thierry Henry did not score today for the first time against Charlton. He's still been named as man of the match, though, and he's talking with Guy Havard. Thierry, many changes to the Arsenal lineup today, but it was the same smooth old performance out there today. Yeah, I think it's not the first time we showed uh, as well when we played uh, against Manu in the FA Cup. Uh, people were saying that, you know, maybe it's, it's going to be a mistake that to rest those players against uh, a lot of players, sorry, against, against Manu, but uh, we showed that we can, we can deal with it. And today is the same, we were at home, you know, whatever, you know, whoever the boss has to put on the pitch, you know, we, we just want to do well and, and win the game. And it was not that easy, you know, after, after playing a Champions League game, it's never easy to, 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 to bounce back after the, in, in, a, in, a chop, in the championship. And uh, today we did it and I think we did well. Two goals in the first half seem to kill the game off somewhat, and you'll be pleased that Franny Jeffers was on the score sheet, I'm sure. Yeah, that's what we're expecting from him, you know. Uh, uh, he's always around the box, and uh, I think he, he, he could have scored another one, but I think he, he didn't fancy it. Arsenal could have scored a few more in the second half as well. Yeah, but I think that's not... You know, that's not the most, most important thing to, to score, um, four or five or, or whatsoever. The most important thing today was to get the free point. And we all know that uh, Charlton was, was doing well at the moment. And they always do well. They always play well at Ivory. And uh, we wanted to, to just uh, extend our league today. We all know that Manu is missing one game because they're playing now. So uh, we just wanted to, to do the job today. We saw plenty of tricks from you today. Have you got any left that we haven't seen? I don't know. You know, I just, uh, I just do things like that. Uh, well, I don't think about it before the game. I just, I just, I just do it. But that's not the most important thing today. You know, I, I, I know that you know when I play with Franny, I know that Franny like to stay, obviously in the box, and I know I have uh, a big part to do around and uh, and dropping stuff. You know, so today that's what I was trying to do to to put my teammates uh, in front of the net. And finally, it's eight points clear now. That's some gap, isn't it, at the top? Yeah, but you know, I hope that's going to stay like that till the end. You know. We can, we can keep on talking, you know, right now, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is to be there, to be there at the end, and, uh, and, and I'm sure that the other team behind is going to try to, to, to catch us back. And but at the end of the day, you know, we, we, uh, we, are, we are carrying on the way we, we, we just wanted to do. That means to, to try to, to extend our league as much as possible. Congratulations today, Thierry. You are the Barclay Card Man of the Match. Thank you. Cheers. He's got more tricks than Paul Daniels. And, and we saw the full repertoire today, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, he really produced the vava voom today, didn't he? <laughs> it was outstanding. But he's world class, and uh, this pace he's got, electric pace, and he made the, both the goals. And as he said there, he drifts wide. He, he just didn't just stay up front with his other uh, pri uh, striking partner. But look at this skill here. Mm. This, this is your is favourite bit, oh, isn't this it? this is wonderful, absolutely. You do this in the training ground, <laughs> but you don't do it normally uh, on the pitch. But like you were saying there, Jeffers stays mainly in, in and around the box eh, for the bits and pieces. But Henri, he comes deep, he drifts wide, and the two goals that Arsenal scored, they both came from great runs by Henri down the wing. Yeah. He laid on the first one with a tremendous run. That incident with Scott Parker was the only downside. Yeah, yeah see, he picks the ball up here in the left wing position, and then it goes into the overdrive. Look at this. And outside of the right foot, another great skill. His support, they get the breaks there, Arsenal. But Chris Powell should have cleared that ball with his right foot and that would have uh, alleviated the, the danger. Slight error here from Luke Young and again he, he creates a golden opportunity for Perez. Yeah, but again look at his position, left wing. And it just fell in between Perez's uh, right foot and his left foot. He should have really taken it with his left foot. There is a great degree of arrogance about him but, but you can't oh, blame him. He's got every reason to be arrogant. Well, just he? now he's probably one of the best strikers in the world. I mean, there's no question about it. And, uh, it's just a joy to watch. Incredibly, he didn't score, so by his own very high status, he'll probably consider himself to be a bit of a failure today. He did everything else, didn't he? Yeah. Everything else but scored, but he's...
the really exciting Arsenal. I mean, in the first 45 minutes, Charlton, they put up a good performance, even though they were 2 nothing down. They were still, you know, quite inventive. They were hanging in there. But second half, Arsenal just went another, another step up and uh, it, was all, it was all over. And fortunately for Charlton, it could have been about four or five. Does it worry you in Premiership terms that Charlton went into this match in sixth place and yet they were basically outclassed? That is a gap, Marcus, now between the top two or three clubs, I think, than the rest trying to get into that top six. There's such a gap. I mean, if you look at all the Arsenal players there, you know, half the team are world class. I mean, they're not just outstanding Premiership players, they are world class players. And this is what you need when you get in these tight games. You think, it's a tight game today for Arsenal. Mm. But eventually, class tells. And they take their time, they're nice and patient with their build up, and they can grind teams down. And they scored lots of their goals when they win matches in the last 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, well, Charlton started very brightly. They were quick to every ball. They pushed, they pressed, they harried. And while it was nil nil, anything could have happened. But from the moment the first goal went in, and inevitably, it was Henri heavily involved in it. There was only going to be one outcome, wasn't there? Yeah, I mean, again, he picks up the ball wide. Benny, here he goes. Outside the right foot. And Jeffers, where he's at his best, is always in the box. He's always mm. anticipating. But mind you, when you're playing in a team like Arsenal have got, yeah. I think Jeffers just needs to stay in the box. Definitely. He doesn't have to do anything else, because they'll create chances for him. The fox in the box, a possible hint of offside, but... No, no, he came late. Yeah. No question about that. And uh, but a great run. Wonderful pace he's got. I found the only weakness in uh, Henri today, and can't take throw-ins. <laughs> That's the only thing he can do. <laughs> At last, we have found a flaw in Thierry Henry's game. <laughs> Not really a very um, significant one. Uh, the second goal on the stroke of half-time, uh, as you said, George, there was just a little touch of luck with the, with the ricochets. And poor old Chris Powell, who, who battled really hard throughout the afternoon. And the funny thing is, this is when Arsenal are arguably at their best. It's when the opposition have got set plays. They've got the break there. But Charlton with the long set piece here and they sent up some of the boys from the back. Arsenal won the ball and within about, I would, I would say, 10 seconds, mm. you know, there was a goal, you know, breaking from their own defensive position. Lundberg onside because that ball came off Chris Powell. Nothing that uh, Dean Carter could really do about it. And again, Marcus, what we're talking about before the game, one of Arsenal's biggest strengths is goals from different positions. Who pops up there right in the, the centre forward position? Perez. What about Freddie Lundberg, who came back and played for an hour, as you said, basically a new signing, and looks as though he's settling himself nicely for the run-in? Yeah, you can bet your boots that uh, Lundberg will be in among the goals in the next few weeks, without question. He is another great asset who will produce goals when maybe Henri is not scoring them. Charlton had the odd moment. Klaus Jensen scored that wonderful goal here in the fixture last season. That free kick, well, no more than a half chance, really. Yeah, it wasn't even a half chance. David Seaman was probably quite, quite uh, comfortable there. Yeah, very, very comfortable. But aside from that, a, a Mark Fisher's header in the second half as well, the, the Arsenal back four barely broke sweat. It's almost like watching a, a, a training session where you try to keep possession against, a, you know, maybe the youth team, you know, just to sort of get your, your build-up play in order. And that reminded me of a, a training session where you just keep possession, you probe, you probe for openings. And mm. that, that was Arsenal in the second half. I mean, really, if they'd been more clinical, they could have got another at least two goals. Well, let's show you one of those examples where Robert Pires should have been a little more clinical. It was um, the mistake here again from, from Luke Young. Again, good closing down there from Arsenal. Very good closing down. Got the break. And then Ron Rhee again, overdrive. Pires should have used his left boots. Should they? have used his left. I think he should have swung his left. The ball wasn't come quickly enough for his right. But good closing down there by Perez. And then, again, he keeps popping up in the wing positions. Yeah. Ron Rhee. Look at Luke Young desperately trying to get back, but he, yeah. he was never going to get there in time, was he? I think they should handicap Henri. I think they should tie some little weights around his ankles. <laughs> it may be the only way to stop them. Um, uh, and then we thought Jeffers was going to get his second uh, and Arsenal's third, but a, a terrific piece of defending from <coughs> Luke Young. We've seen him making the mistake there, but this is wonderful defending yeah. that you and I really appreciate. Yeah, well, I work with Luke Young, a tremendous pro, and he never gives in. And here, most people would just give in, but look at this tackle. I mean, that's fantastic. That is, that is. I mean, that is on the goal line, and Jeffers is just ready to blow it in. <laughs> good save by the goalkeeper again. The goalkeeper's played well today. Kyle. He has. He's had a good game today. But a, a goal scorer of, of, of Jeffers' credentials yeah, will be disappointed with this, He'll be disappointed with that. He'll be disappointed. He probably didn't think there was anybody behind him. Oh, look at that. That's a great tackle. It Wonderful is. tackle. 
How do you see Charlton's season panning from here? We mentioned before the game they have a, a tendency to drift away in the closing weeks of the season. But do you think they've got the strength and the ability to actually push on and claim a European If Alan Corbisch, thinks that they've improved from last season. And uh, they're, they're, in my opinion, they're then one of those uh, block of clubs that are capable of putting a five, six run together both ways. You know, mm. undefeated, and then maybe not getting a point, and they're one of those clubs. And to make this advance that he expects, then they've got to put this little run together now that keeps them in that top six. They're capable of doing it, yes. Okay, well, we'll have the thoughts of the two managers in the final part of the programme. Arsene Wenger's had another very comfortable afternoon. Minimum effort required. And Alan Kerber, who is shifting a little uncomfortably on a difficult day in North London. It's finished 2 0 to Arsenal here at Highbury. They're now eight points clear at the top of the Premiership table. And Arsene Wenger is with our reporter, Guy Havlord. Arsene, two goals in the first half, and in the end, a comfortable victory. Well, I believe we delivered a strong, solid performance with a great spirit. And of course, the, in the second half, the legs became a little bit heavy because many of those players have. Uh, we had big, big games recently, and uh, we were kept the shape and uh, we looked always solid defensively. You struggled to get the breakthrough against Ajax, so was it a relief when Franny Jeffers put you ahead nice and early? Yes, of course, and in the second half I, I, I thought uh, we created many chances as well, but uh, couldn't take them, but overall I'm very pleased with the team. They really wanted the three points today and uh, we got them. You made changes, you had to make changes. Cole was out and Vieira was out and Lauren, yeah. Lauren as well. And, and, but you still put a, a couple of sort of first teamers on the bench as well. What was the thinking behind that? Well, I felt that uh, in the second half against Ajax, we looked a little bit, uh, some players looked a little bit tired because they played many games. And uh, it's part of uh, uh, rotation as well. We have uh, 18, 20 players of uh, top, top level. And I thought that we needed some fresh blood. Thierry Henry is one player who you don't rest. Do you not need to rest him? You would need because he, I believe in the second half he pushed dig, dig, dig uh, in his resources to get through, but he's such a physical uh, potential of recovery. He's physically so strong, such an immense potential that uh, he can make it. But and if you look at the number of games he played since the beginning of the season, it's just outstanding. The goal just before half-time, the second goal, that seemed to knock the stuffing out of Charlton. I felt so that in the second half we came out and uh, didn't want uh, to allow them to get back into the game and from then on uh, uh, we had a few chances to score the third one but, uh, and didn't give anything away at the back. Eight points clear now with Manchester United obviously not involved in premiership action this weekend. Is it a big psychological blow for you? I think uh, it's a big step uh, for us today to get the three points but of course it's a long way to go still and a lot to do but we, we know that uh, uh, the hybrid strengths will be certainly uh, determinant, and that's why I'm very pleased with the three points today. Congratulations today. Thank you. Thank you. It is a daunting lead, isn't it? Just how good is this Arsenal side, George? Well, I mean, when Arsenal first came, everybody thought, you know, is he going to bring European uh, trophies to it? Instead of that, he's actually done brilliant, absolutely brilliant domestically. They'll never be actually recognised as a great side. You like the, Liverpool, the old Liverpool sides and the Manchester United, Juventus, AC Milan, until they win the Champions League. If they win the Champions League, yeah, they came down as a great side. Their next two games are in knockout competitions. They've got Chelsea here in the FA Cup quarterfinals, and they play Roma in the Champions League. Uh, and then five in the Premiership, starting at Blackburn, who've already actually won here at Highbury. And Everton, Villa, Southampton and Manchester United, four of those five have actually beaten uh, Arsenal this season. So perhaps it's not all over, but if they play as they are at the moment in the next four, United at home could be the championship decider, couldn't it? Very much so. I mean, the destiny without question is in Arsenal's own hands. And the way they play, Marcus, away from home, they're just as good, if not better, you know, than at Highbury. So, whether they're playing home or away, it doesn't make any difference to them. They still play the same way. If it's on to the attack, they will attack away from home. Mm -hmm. Their defence has definitely improved uh, over the few months uh, since last season. And they're looking solid, and especially with Martin Keogh. And they've got to wrap him up at his age in cotton wool to play alongside Campbell. And they really look nice and solid. So many options up front, of course. Um, we touched on Fanny Jeffers' contribution. He obviously wants to establish himself alongside Thierry Henry up front. 
marks out of 10 for his overall display? Uh, I would say seven. Uh, to me, as a youngster at Everton, he was uh, renowned for being a goal scorer, penalty box player. And in this Arsenal team, if he gets a little run, that is a big question. Is he going to get a run? And uh, he's capable, I think, of scoring a lot more goals. Mm. Uh, only time will tell. Is he under extra pressure because he should score more goals playing in this very attack-minded <laughs> Arsenal side? Well, the trouble is, there's so many of them, you know, not only Henri. I mean, last season, Lundberg finished up second top goal scorer. Perez uh, weighs in with about uh, double figures. So, yeah, they'll be expecting Fanny to at least get into double figures mm. uh, and get probably 75% uh, of Henri, you know, the, the number that Henri gets. Mm. Interesting point, actually, that, that guy made uh, to Arsene Wenger, the one player he doesn't rest is Thierry Henry. If he did try and put him on the bench, he'd be doing his keepy-uppies and all his tricks probably in front of Wenger. He wouldn't see any of the game, would he? Yeah, but um, I still think, uh, uh, mental-wise, it's, it's nice to sort of uh, leave your, your striker out like him. Because I think he could play uh, Jeffers, he could play uh, uh, Bergkamp off Jeffers. You know, there, there's so many different variations and options. You know, it's, uh, that's why they're one of the best mm. team, if not the best, in the country at the present time. Alan Kerbishley would love to have the option of leaving Thierry Henry on his bench. He's now talking with Guy. Alan, from Charleston's point of view, it was all a bit different from last season, wasn't it? Well, it was, but um, you know, a little bit, I'm obviously disappointed that we've been playing ever so well, and I don't think we ever really got going today, but I think that's a lot to do with uh, Arsenal. I think they fought with us in every move we tried to make. You know, if the ball went up front in the air, they challenged it. If we got away on the ground with Kevin Nisby, they were they was as quick. Our midfield, which has been uh, as strong uh, as anything for us, uh, you know, we couldn't get away from theirs. So, um, you know, we're disappointed, but we played against a great side. We know that. Nothing to be disgraced about. Two defeats in 16. It's still looking good towards the top for you, but you get a measure of what is above you, I suppose, today. You can't measure us with Arsenal. Uh, let's be realistic about it. You know, they've years and years of uh, tradition and winning things and the infrastructure of this football club is, is, is by far in, in front of us. But, you know, we're in, that, we're in that premiership to compete and, you know, we, we give it a bit of a go second half. I think it was the second goal that knocked the stuff out of us so near half time. But the second half, we got into it a little bit, attacked them and that's the worst thing to do sometimes because they broke on us ever so quickly and, and perhaps could have nicked a few more goals. Your keeper had a good game, didn't he? Yeah, you need him to. I mean, Dean's been fantastic, but you this season, but you need your goalkeeper to get 10 out of 10 at Arsenal if you're going to get anything from the game. Commiserations today? Yeah, but, you know, we, I'm not downhearted, obviously, because of the season so far, but, uh, you know, we came here and uh, we, we give it a go, but we wasn't good enough on the day. Thanks for your time, Alan. That's OK. Well, he's realistic enough. He had that wonderful win here last season, but um, in his heart of hearts, I think he knew that that was very likely to happen yeah. today, wasn't yeah. it? Let's be honest, Marcus. Arsenal, are, are, they're, they're competing. They're in a competition to win a championship. Charlton are in a competition, really, to finish in Europe at best. Alan at would best. say to avoid the drop first and foremost. Anything yeah. else is a bonus, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I would, I would agree with that. I think their first priority, as he says, is to get those 40 points to, to retain your premiership status. But this season, they have moved on, and why not? Why not sort of see if you can challenge for Europe? Let's have a look at their next five games, which will have a, a significant bearing as to whether they can clinch a UEFA Cup or who knows, even a Champions League spot. Newcastle home, then Middlesbrough, uh, Leeds, Blackburn, Birmingham. It's, uh, well, at this stage of the season, most sides have something to play for, but certainly at home at the moment, you, you wouldn't really bet against them, Yeah, you? I mean, you, you can see them picking up points there with no problem. And uh, obviously, you know, there's some difficult games there. Uh, Middlesbrough have got a great home record. Uh, Blackburn, Blackburn, you never Blackburn, know, do you? Yeah, you never know with Blackburn. You know, they sort of lose two or three, and then they win two or three. They, they do a yo-yoing up and down the league as well. So, you know, there's every chance they could pick up points and stay where they are. It's going to be an exciting finale for them. George, thank you very much for your company this Pleasure. afternoon. Uh, don't forget the Worthington Cup final is live right now. It's still nil-nil at the Millennium Stadium. Switch to Sky Sports 1 for coverage of that. Tonight at 7 from La Liga, Real Betis against Sevilla. The Accenture World Match Play. Final day of that on Sky Sports 2 from 8. And over on Sky Sports 3 right now, they're heading towards an exciting finale in that World Cup tie. This afternoon from George and from me, it's goodbye.